So let's say we have talked about multi-dimensional array, right? Now in multi-dimensional array, of course you specify the number of rows you want. So if you look at the code here, we have specified what are the rows we have. And in each big array, we have an array, small array, which is of size four, right? And then we were assuming that every row or every array inside the array will have the same size. Example, if you look at these three arrays here, they have the same size. But what's the guarantee that they will be having the same size? What if you have an array here, which is of size three, uh, here you have a size four, here you have a size two. Can we do that? Can we have the internal arrays or the columns basically having less values? It is possible. So what I'm saying is this four is not fixed. We can simply say, hey, I don't know the number of columns I have. Yes, we can do that. So the internal array or the inside array can have different size of elements. Now this type of array is called a jagged array. So before this, we, would, we talked about normal or regular arrays where you have, you have to specify the size. At this point, we are not doing that. See, we have to at least specify how many arrays we have, but internally, those uh, those rows, we don't have to specify how many columns we have. That we can manage. But how? How are we going to manage? So what we can do is, once you specify that I, I'm not sure about the number of columns here, which is jagged array, then we have to individually specify how many columns you have. What I'm saying is, you have to say index of zero is equal to, for the first array, you have to specify how many values you have. So you have to say new int three. So that's the first thing we have. And then likewise, we can specify the other values. I can say copy, paste, and paste. For the first index, I have the size, let's say four. For the second index, I have a lesser size two. So that's how we to manage this one. Now this is your jagged array. Okay, I mean this one. This is your jagged array, not a normal array. Because individually for every column, we are specifying what's the size of it. Now, if you, if you try to imagine this in a new structure, let me draw it here. So you got a box. This is the outer outer thing. And in this you have three rows and each row will have a box. Now the first box will be of size three. The second box will be of size four and the third box will be of size two. Okay, so we have different size of array in different uh, at different location. So for zero index, we have three. For the first index, we have two, or oh, sorry, four. For the second index, we have two. That's what we have done here. Okay, now once we specify that, the, the thing is, how will you save the value inside this. Now the problem is the number of rows are fixed, but I don't even want to mention the number here. The way you can solve that problem is by saying nums of, or maybe you can say nums dot length. This will, this will show you the number of rows you have, but for every row, okay. In fact, you know what we should do? We should save that value somewhere. Um, or maybe we can say this nums of I for every row, I want to know the size. So now basically we have, we are specifying the size of each array. So for the first array, I have three values. For the second array, I have four values. So for every row, how many, what's the length we, are, we have here? That's what we are specifying. And now while printing as well, instead of using normal for loop, let's use enhanced for loop. And the beauty about no enhanced for loop is you don't have to mention the size anywhere. It will automatically de detect where the values are. Okay, so if I try to compile this code and run, you can see this is the values you have. The first row we got three, second row we got four, and the third row we got two, okay? Now this is the jagged arrays. So once we know about jagged arrays, let's go back to normal array. Uh, what we can also do is, we can skip this part now. Can we create three-dimensional array? We can. Every time you want to increase the dimension, you just have to specify extra square bracket and extra loops for every every square bracket. So now you can imagine if I want to draw this, I don't know how do we how do we draw this, but let's try. So we have the outer box in which you specify how many rows you have. We have three rows, zero, one, two. In this, you have an array of size four. So one, two, three, four. And in each box, you have one more array here, which is of size five. Okay, let me just do that with a small, let me expand this. And in this, we have one more array of size five. Okay, uh, this is index number zero, one, two, three, four. And then this is zero, one, two, three. So if I, if I want to fetch this value here, which has value, let's say six, 
if you want to fetch this 6 you have to say 0 comma 0 comma 2 right and of course in every box here we'll be having the same thing we have the box here which has four elements and each box will be having multiple arrays so we have array here as well and if i want to fetch let's say the third element here we have to say 1 comma 1 comma 3 okay that's how you fetch it so the more array you create it will create a box internally to it so that's how the array works uh, now this is not jacked anymore this is three dimensional array so i hope this makes sense uh, we have talked about jacked arrays and three dimensional array in one video